Now onto part 22, we're going to continue with building out the functions that we need in our result controller and build out the markup that's going to allow the user to see what result they got and what percentage score they received in the quiz. Welcome back to part 22 of this course on AngularJS. And in the last part, we showed how to create the markup for the results of each question. But we showed that we cannot currently click any of these buttons and change the current question. So we need to create the function to allow this. So we will come into our HTML and we'll just add a reference to that function first. So that will be on this button here. No, not that one. This button here. And we've said the results.set active question. So we've called that. And now in our controller, we need to create the set active question. So we'll say vm.set active question equals set active question. And that will be a function set active question. And we'll pass it an index because in our HTML we're giving it an argument here. So we'll give that argument there. And all we want to do here is say vm.active question. Equals index. And that's it. So of course we could in our HTML up here in our ng click we could simply set results.active question equals dollar sign index and in this case that would probably be better but I just want to expose you to as many ways of doing things as possible so we just use the function here so that's that function and now we want to create this area here for you scored and gives you your score and then your percentage. So we'll do that quickly. Come back into our HTML and scroll to the little gap we left here. And we'll create another row. And inside that row, we'll just make it full width and we'll give it that top buffer class that we created several videos ago just to give it a bit of room at the top a bit of margin on the top and then inside here we'll say an h2 that says you scored and then the angular binding results dot quiz metrics and we want to reference this variable here num correct which is at zero but then when we mark the quiz every time we get a correct answer it increments that num correct so we'll say dot num correct so that's how many we scored and then we'll put a slash for out of and then we want the total number of questions and that will be results dot data service dot quiz questions dot length. So you scored and then the number you got correct and then the total number of questions in the quiz. And now we want our percentage. So we'll give ourselves another H2. And we'll put this in bold. So we'll put it in a strong tag. And then we want a percentage, which we'll put in here, and we'll call a function to calculate that for us. Calculate purse for calculate percentage, and then we'll just add the percentage sign. And now that will go off and calculate the percentage. So we need to create that. So vm.calculate percentage equals calculate percentage 
function calculate percentage. Then of course this will need to return a value. So we will return and the value that we want to return is the number of questions we got right divided by the total number of questions multiplied by 100, which is how you calculate the percentage. So that will be quiz metrics dot num correct, which is the variable we've just used, divided by data service dot quiz questions dot length. multiplied by 100. And then we're returning that value into here and that will be displayed as a percentage. So of course we need to add in the parentheses there and we'll come back into the browser. We'll start the quiz. Yes. And we scored 3 out of 10 which is 30%. So now depending on how many questions you have in this quiz, there's something you might run into. So if you've got something that might return you a percentage with multiple decimal places. So here we have 10 questions, so it's always going to be a percentage that's a factor of 10. So it's going to work out nicely and display nicely. But if you've got, say, three questions and you get one right, it will say 33.33333 and it will just have loads of threes. So there's another filter in Angular that we can use to filter that down to just however many decimal places we want, say, for example, two decimal places. So we'll come back into our HTML. So here where it says calculate percentage, we can then use a filter. So if you remember, we use the filter by using the pipe symbol. And the filter we need this time is called number, and then colon. And then after the colon, we give it the amount of decimal places we want to filter it to. So we can filter it down to two. So it doesn't matter for this example, because as I said, we've got 10 questions, so it's always going to display nicely. But if you do run into that problem yourself, be aware that there is this number filter and you can filter the number of decimal places. So now if we just head back into the browser and we can take a look at if clicking this works. So we now have that functionality down. So the function to click those buttons works. So the next thing we need to do is correct the issue with the images again. Just like we did in our quiz controller, we need to display these images nicely. And that's what we'll tackle in the next part. For those of you that haven't checked out my website yet, I do a full article write-up for every single video that I put out on YouTube, and that will include code snippets and other little things that will help you along. The link to the write-up for the current video is on the bottom left of the screen. And if you just want to continue watching this video series, then just click the link in the center of the screen and we'll get started with the next video.